A cordial greeting. Today is Tuesday, September 9, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. According to the climatology of the Atlantic Ocean, tomorrow, September 10, is the peak of the season. And to the surprise of many, at this moment we do not have active tropical cyclones, nor do we have areas marked with suspicion of cyclonic development during the next seven days. So many have been talking over the past few days on social media about why the Atlantic is extremely quiet right at the peak of the season. In today's video I would like to talk about different factors that have caused the past few weeks to be extremely inactive, and I will be focusing a lot on a publication from the University of Colorado in which they try to explain the reasons why, for the moment, we have not seen cyclonic activity, even though a more active than normal season was forecast. Very interestingly, in the University of Colorado's analysis, they caution against speculating that the rest of the season will be inactive, because there are many factors suggesting that the second half of the season may be quite active. Even so, it is still surprising that currently we have no areas marked for cyclonic development during the next seven days. And in fact, it is the first time since 2009, and since the National Hurricane Center began marking areas with probabilities of cyclonic development, that at the peak of the season we have no active cyclones nor areas marked with probabilities of cyclonic development. So it is definitely something totally atypical. This has led the hurricane season, in terms of tropical storms and hurricanes, to remain below normal with six storms and only one hurricane formed up to today's date. Furthermore, fortunately Hurricane Aaron, which was a Category 5, remained over open waters of the Atlantic. So in reality we have not seen the significant impact of a tropical cyclone in the Atlantic region. In addition, in terms of accumulated cyclone energy, we are already at what would be considered below normal. But as you will see in the coming minutes, this could be changing by late September and early October, because the ingredients for the rest of the season to be active are present in the Atlantic. First, let's review a bit of what the University of Colorado and some experts in tropical meteorology discussed. As we have spoken about over the past few weeks, in the Atlantic we continue to register quite a lot of dry air descending from the subtropical Atlantic, and this is caused because the Azores high pressure has remained stronger than normal, and this drives dry and stable air into the tropical Atlantic. In fact, this is precisely what we saw with what was Invest 91, which failed to achieve cyclonic development in the tropical Atlantic mainly due to dry and stable air in that area. On the other hand, and as we had discussed in the previous video, the tropical Atlantic since July has remained with atmospheric instability below normal, and this definitely generates unfavorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. In fact, we can also see this in the blue colors in this image, which shows the rate of air cooling as we rise in the atmosphere, and in blue, across almost the entire North Atlantic, we have a cooling rate below normal, which generates atmospheric stability conditions. This may be related to global warming, since it has been found that the atmosphere is heating up more rapidly at higher levels, and this causes atmospheric stability conditions. And as if that were not enough, in recent weeks we have also seen the establishment of a trough over the southeastern United States, which has helped generate some wind shear and promote dry air across the Atlantic. Also in recent days we have seen that the western zone of Africa has had below normal precipitation. This suggests that tropical waves have been weaker than normal since late August. In addition, an unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation has also dominated conditions across the Atlantic, generating unfavorable conditions for cyclonic formation, and this is represented in this image by the yellow and orange colors. Now, we must be very careful and continue to watch the Atlantic, because by late September and early October, a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation will be moving over the Caribbean and Atlantic and likely generating much more favorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. Global models are already beginning to project better conditions in the Atlantic. For example, starting on September 19, the models project that wind shear could be decreasing dramatically across the main cyclogenesis region. And although in recent days wind shear has been above normal, if we analyze the past month, in reality wind shear has been below normal since we have neutral ENSO conditions in the Pacific. In fact, wind shear across the southwestern Atlantic has been so low that according to historical data it would be related to hurricane seasons that have been hyperactive. Represented by the black line, we can see that since August, wind shear in the western Atlantic has been at extremely low levels and historically this is related to hyperactive seasons. Meanwhile, in the Pacific we continue with neutral ENSO conditions, and in fact it appears that La Nina will return between October and November. Additionally, the North Atlantic region is with sea surface temperatures above normal. So much so that in the main cyclogenesis region, on average, the temperatures are at levels related to hyperactive seasons, although definitely much cooler than what we recorded during 2024. Also, if we analyze the winds at higher levels of the atmosphere, the University of Colorado comments that the winds are very favorable for an active season. 
And although for the moment the Atlantic is extremely quiet, the University of Colorado has warned that we cannot ignore all the ingredients that suggest the second half of the season will be quite active, and it is possible that what happened in 2024 could repeat, when in early and mid-September the Atlantic was very quiet, but by late September and during October we saw the formation of several tropical cyclones in the tropical Atlantic. In addition, we had the formation of powerful Hurricane Milton in the Gulf of Mexico. Everything seems to indicate that when the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation arrives, we will have the ideal ingredients for the hurricane season to reactivate in a potentially surprising way. And for example, in 2024 we had the formation of powerful Hurricane Kirk and also Tropical Storm Leslie in the tropical Atlantic during October. So there's the possibility that the pattern will repeat, where the peak of the season occurred in late September and early October. And as a final message, the University of Colorado comments the following. Given the favorable sea surface temperature conditions for cyclone development and taking into account that by late September and early October, wind shear is expected to be below normal, we recommend great caution before considering the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season over. As we saw last year, the season can go from being very quiet to becoming very active in the blink of an eye. So this is why the message we want to convey is that there is the possibility that the rest of the season will be active, and it is important that we all remain attentive to conditions in the tropics. In fact, Long-range models are already beginning to show the possibility of cyclonic development in about 7 to 9 days to the west and southwest of the Cape Verde Islands, which aligns very well with the latest forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, which has over a 40% chance of development near Cape Verde between September 17th and 23rd. Also note that they mark the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean with over a 20% chance of cyclonic development during the second half of September. So here at Hurricane Info I will continue to monitor the Atlantic to keep you informed and the recommendation is that we all review our emergency plans in case cyclones form in the coming weeks. And before I go, I wanted to ask you to give a like to this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. See you later.